Welcome back to King's Film Room and today we're going to be taking a look at the film of Kevin Herter. Kevin was one of the biggest names Sacramento brought in this past offseason and his fit on the roster is nearly perfect. I'll be analyzing just about every facet to Herter's game as well as just how he should fit in with his new team. So let's go ahead and watch the tape. When you talk about Kevin Herter, usually the first thing that comes to mind is shooting, and that's really the case for most of Sacramento's new pieces. Kevin is a borderline elite marksman as he shot about 39% from three this past season on just under 6 attempts per game, to go along with his 42% mark on catch and shoot threes as well. He possesses an effortless stroke, and in my opinion one of the quickest releases in the game. There is balance and fluidity in both his base and upper mechanics, with the same consistent motion every time. Much like how the Kings project to be, Atlanta ran an up-tempo system centered around their dynamic young point guard. Herter thrived in this environment. He leaked out in transition, filled his lanes, and was always ready and set to receive the ball. Sometimes this would lead to easy layup opportunities just purely based on his hustle, but he also became accustomed to spotting up in transition and knocking down shots on the move. I love how in this play, Herter recognizes a flaw in the defense. All five defenders shift to the opposite side of the floor, so Kevin pops out to the open space into an easy look for three. In the half court, the Hawks offense was designed to get Trey Young as many ball screen opportunities as possible. Because of this mindset, Herter was slightly limited to what he could do offensively. With Young as the initiator, Kevin was mainly used as a floor spacer. He helped keep the court spread out for Trey to operate, with the only noticeable amount of movement being weak side lifts or drifts to the corner. These are still good traits to have off ball though, as he would help create easier passing angles for his point guard. But the Hawks still did find some ways to utilize Herter as a movement shooter. He would occasionally come off pin down, staggers, be used in floppy, or other actions designed to get Herter looks in advantageous situations. However, what you'll notice when watching these clips is that Herter is so much more than just a shooter. This is just a standard stagger set for Herter, but Kevin is very adept at curling off screens to get downhill, which is the case here. Capella never makes any contact with the screen, so it allowed Levine to go under and quickly eliminate any advantage. But a nifty hesitation by Herter gives him a driving lane anyways, and he uses a pump fake to get Levine in the air, freeing him up for the finish. These ghost screen actions are another variation I'm very intrigued by in terms of translating to Sacramento. In these actions, Herder would ghost ball screens for Trey Young, so no actual screen is being set, and instead Kevin is popping out in the perimeter. But the defense still has to respect Herder as a screener and react accordingly. When you transfer this to the Kings, just think about the opportunities possible. Defenses are not supposed to switch, since no actual contact is being made. But if they do, then Fox is likely generating a favorable matchup. And if they elect to not switch, then the on-ball defender is probably going to be at a disadvantage with Herter helping Fox create an angle to attack. Here is a floppy set Atlanta love to run. Again, Herter curls off the pin down, and from here it's just a pick and roll game. He takes one dribble, which draws both defenders and frees up this lob over the top to Capella. Kevin's passing ability is another attribute that separates him from players of his stature. Herter is a very underrated operator out of the pick and roll overall. There were times throughout games where the Hawks would let Kevin act as the initiator, giving Trey a bit of relief. He's usually looking to create for himself here, and he has a good pull-up game in the in-between area. This is a clutch time situation with just 2 minutes left in a close game, and Atlanta is trusting Herter to be the initiator in the offense. Here we have double ball screens, and Miles Turner is in a really deep drop. This allows Herter to easily 1-2 step his way into a pull-up midi. Some of the flashes from Herter in his pick and roll game are extremely impressive. This play starts off as a sideline out of bounds play. It's a staggered set that Kevin curls and draws Zubots up on his drive. Since Capella didn't roll, nothing is there, but watch how Kevin kicks it to Capella anyways in order to initiate a two-man game. This is basically just a flipped ball screen, and this go around Herter is able to knock down a floater. Now back to that passing ability I've already touched on. Herter is real solid in his decision making out of the pick and roll. He doesn't make many advanced reads, but flashes are there. Kevin can make these lob passes to the bigs, he can kick out to shooters, and every so often make the difficult read on these weak side skip passes. And one thing that's very evident is the IQ Kevin possesses. Here when this handoff results in a switch, Herter is smart enough to recognize the mismatch generated and allow Gallo time to post up. From here he feeds Gallo and lets him go to work. And I love here, when Herter gets caught in the air he doesn't panic and stays afloat long enough in order to make the right read anyways, hitting Collins on the roll with his man sealed off. 
Little nuances like this give you a glimpse of the advanced IQ and instincts that Kevin has. His 2.7 assists per game may not be jaw dropping, but he's only turning the ball over 1.2 times to go along with it. Basically all of these actions covered so far should be quite easily transferable to Sacramento. Staggers and pin downs will certainly be used along with the option for more. Maybe Mike Brown implements some floppy sets of his own and hopefully we see some ghost actions between Herder and Fox. Of course Kevin could be used in Spain pick and rolls as well and there's also new abilities that should be unlocked. In Atlanta, Herter was hardly used as a cutter. He would still make smart and timely cuts, but there just weren't too many opportunities for him to get involved in this way. The paint was clogged by guys like Capella and Collins, and both of whom aren't great passers out of the post either. Luckily in his new home, the Kings possess who is likely the second best passing big man in the league in Demonis Sabonis. This opens up the possibility for split action, as well as Herter simply getting rewarded for his cuts off ball. I don't see too many flaws in Herter's offensive game, but the one thing that's pretty clear is a bit of a loose handle. Herter doesn't have an awful control of the ball, but his handle could definitely be tighter. And he's just not shifty nor explosive enough for him to be able to create his own offense without the use of a pick and roll. This has never been his role, so it shouldn't be a problem, but it's still something to take note of. But even with these limitations, there are still plenty of things Herter can do off the dribble for himself. Rather it be attacking closeouts or picking on weaker and smaller defenders, Kevin has a great understanding of when to be aggressive. He can rise up in the lane over some of the smaller defenders and does a great job at getting the basket. We haven't really talked about his finishing ability yet, but this is another attribute to his game where he's solid. He shot a respectable 66% within 3 feet this past season, can finish with either hand, and is strong enough to power through contact. Moving over to defense and things get a little more complicated here. In Atlanta, Herter was mainly used to make up for Trey's deficiencies on the defensive end, so Kevin was consistently drawing the tougher assignments and had an extremely high workload here. Even though Fox has his own struggles on the defensive end, it's still unlikely for Herter to take over as the primary point of attack defender, meaning Kevin's job should be a lot easier in Sacramento. Herter isn't the quickest laterally, yet Atlanta forced him out of his comfort zone in a lot of his matchups. You would see often where Herter's lack of mobility would cost him against quicker guards. He would be beaten off the dribble too easily and struggle to consistently cut players off and force a change of direction. For someone like Herter who lacks the athletic tools necessary, he needs to do a better job at anticipating drives and first moves. The biggest concern I have for Herder on ball is the lack of deceleration. He's not comfortable at changing speeds and doesn't have the start and stop ability you would want when guarding shifty ball handlers. Any player with a good step back or pull up game could take advantage of this, forcing Herder to retreat and watch as he struggles to change direction. When players were in a position to get downhill against Herder, you could see some of the hip mobility problems. Again, this has a lot to do with change of direction, as Kevin doesn't flip his hips at speeds fast enough to hold his own in a lot of cases. But Kevin does have some positive traits at the point of attack, mostly due to his size and strength. He's able to effectively bother players with his length, altering shots while riding their hip from the side or behind. This is a good way to make up for his other limitations. Herder also has a really underrated strength in his core. Not necessarily to the level of a guy like Davion Mitchell, but Kevin is able to take bumps to the chest without losing his balance more times than not. And in a play like this, you can see how Herder has no fear. He's actually leaning into the contact with his upper body, knowing he'll be able to control any bumps he outcome throws at him. Plus, it's not as if Herder is completely immobile on the defensive end. When he isn't in situations with a clear disadvantage, he's able to contain his man relatively well. As long as he isn't forced upon explosive ball handlers, Herder is a plus on-ball defender. The effort is always there, and he knows how to use his strengths well. And on this play, you even get a glimpse of some really quick hip speed, stopping the initial drive and flipping his hips to force a pickup of the ball and a really tough shot. Screen navigation for Herder is really just much of what we've already talked about. In these clips, you'll see guys like Lamella Ball or Reggie Jackson, some of the quicker ball handlers who know how to properly use picks. They come off screens quick and tight, which leaves very little margin for error for the point of attack defender. And these are the types of situations where Herder will struggle. This is where he gets caught on screen. Sometimes he's late in anticipating the contact from screeners, other times he comes off too wide and isn't able to get skinny and eliminate space. Even when he gets chipped very slightly, oftentimes it's still enough to give the ball handler an advantage. On this play, Herder never picks up the screen until the screen is set and at that point it's already too late. Even though there's enough space for Herder to get skinny here, he doesn't use it and instead lazily swipes at the ball and puts him well behind Curry. 
Luckily he gets bailed out on this play by the Warriors lack of spacing. Another issue with Kevin's screen nav is sometimes when he does anticipate screens, he allows for easy rejects. On these plays, it's great that he's aware of the screener, but he shifts his feet too far in preparation for the screen that allows a ton of open space for ball handlers to go the other way. And in some of these instances, he's taking his eyes off the ball altogether. He needs to be lighter on his feet here, and he should never turn his head on the ball. But there are also plenty of times where Herder is able to pick up on and properly navigate through screens. The effort is always there and he's great at keeping a hand on the ball handler to stay attached to picks. Reggie Jackson comes off this screen wide enough to give Herder space to fight over, although Zubots does lean in on his pick. But Kevin fights through the contact, keeps a hand on Jackson's hip, quickly recovers, and uses his length to help discourage a shot here. Where Herder provides more value on defense is as a team defender. He's got an extremely high IQ and feel for the game, with a knack for making the correct rotations and maintaining a lot of activity on this end. A lot of this stuff goes unnoticed, but he had no problem in helping mitigate his teammates' mistakes even if the end result is the same. Just minor nuances like picking up when his teammates get beat or Xing out on the weak side can go a long way. Watch here how the Hornets run a ball screen in order to generate a mismatch for Gordon Hayward, looking to get the Trey Young switch. Herder isn't even involved in this action, yet he recognizes it from the weak side, motions for Trey to switch in order to take the Hayward assignment for himself. The Hawks need to get a stop here late in the fourth, and when Herder gets screened to allow for an easy Levine drive, he never gives up on the play. Bogdanovich picks up Levine, and Kevin is quick to recognize he needs to peel off on a Kobe White in the corner, covering a ton of ground and tipping the shot on his closeout. And then just watch the activity here throughout the entire play. Another way the Hawks used Herder defensively was as an off-ball chaser, basically just as someone matched up with an elite shooter with the goal of running them off screens and keeping up with their off-ball movement. In this Warriors game, he had to do it against Steph at times. It takes a lot of activity and effort to do this against a guy like Steph, and I thought Kevin did a good job here. That about wraps it up for this breakdown, and this one turned out to take a lot longer than expected. But Kings fans should be excited for Herder and everything he adds to the roster. Anyways, thank you guys for sticking around and helping support the channel, and see you guys next time.